Why are, you, why are you shooting at the wall? Oh, guys, I made a horrible mistake. How's it going, everybody? My name is Parallax Abstraction, and welcome to another Retro Flashback Plays. Uh, sorry about the sort of lousy picture quality here. Let me minimize that. That should make it a little bit better. Uh, yeah, this webcam's starting to die on me, I think, so it's on my list to replace, so sorry about that. Anywho, so, yeah, uh, we're doing another one of these. It's been a little while since I finished Startopia, and I wanted to do another one, but this one might surprise you a little bit with what we're going to be doing. So, uh, I do did have a different game lined up, which will be coming up at next, but I decided to do this one first, because it's going to be a little short, and, well, I kind of have to know how it ends. So, we're actually going to be doing a full playthrough of Siberia. Yeah, you're probably scratching your head right now if you follow this channel. If you look, click on that thing down there right now, you can look at the retro flashback, the standard episode I did of this game earlier this week. And I kind of didn't like it very much. It's a game I had fond memories of and that has not aged well and that was probably not very good back in the day, like most interactive movies. And you're probably wondering why the heck I want to play that. Well... Basically, I have to know. Uh, I don't remember anything about the story in the game, and I remember it goes really strange, and I like weird sci-fi that's kind of kooky and dumb. So I just want to see how it ends. And yeah, I could read the end of a walkthrough or check someone else's Let's Play, but what the hell's the fun in that, right? So yeah, we're going to do a full run of it since I own it. Uh, I bought the GOG version, so I mean, might as well get some more use out of it, right? So... Um, yeah, we're going to be doing a full run of that. As I understand it, the game is not very long. Uh, most of it is padded out by really difficult, obtuse puzzles. And, well, I got a solution for that. This is a walkthrough printout right here. So, a couple of things here. I complained in the original video that control for the flight sequences was really bad because the GOG version doesn't work properly with controllers. Still the case, unfortunately. However, the game actually does have mouse support, which you'd never know if you couldn't check the manual, which GOG buries in the installation folder for some stupid reason. Um, and it's also the 3DO version, which makes things even more interesting. But I actually uh, managed to get mouse control working uh, for the flight sequences, which makes them much easier. Uh, so we're going to do that. I'm actually going to also be putting them on lowest difficulty because the flight sequences later on get really, really tough and demanding. So we're going to do it that way. For the puzzles, you can't put both puzzles and flight sequences on easy. So we're going to put the puzzles on medium. And that's what this is for. Uh, if, I, if a puzzle takes any more than a few tries, I'm just going to use a walkthrough to get through it. I make no compunctions or apologies for cheating through this game because the puzzles are stupid and designed to pad things out. So that's what we're going to do there. So... Yeah, I just want to see how this ends. So what the hell? We'll do a run through this, and then we'll do the other game that I have coming up, which I'm actually really looking forward to. I think you guys are going to like it a lot. No, um, if you listen to the latest Ramblecast, which may or may not be up when this video goes up, uh, I at the end, uh, during the little plug section, I talk about what game it's going to be. So if you really want to know, go listen to that. Otherwise, um, you'll see what it is later. So, yeah. Um, so... I discovered in the manual as well some backstory, which I think is pretty helpful, because when Siber uh, Siberia starts off, you kind of are thrown right into things, and you're kind of like, what? What's the, what is the backstory behind this and these characters and everything else? I don't know why, but they buried the background in the manual. The only thing I can think of is that they couldn't figure out a way to tell that story and keep the pacing up, or uh, they just didn't have the budget to do it. Uh, so there's just a little bit in here, but it gives a little bit of context and flavor to the universe we're in, so... Yeah, I'm just going to read this off to you here, and you can uh, you get an idea of what we're doing. So, this is at the front of the manual. So, background. Earth, 2027, five years after the global economic collapse. Hmm, topical. The fracturing of the world economy brings about swift changes in the global power structure. Now, the criminal cartels, capitalized, struggle against the free world alliance for control of the planet. You control Zack, an outlaw computer hacker with some very useful skills. Unfortunately, they do you little good while sitting in an FWA confinement cell, awaiting trial and sentencing for treason and espionage. That's not explained. William Devlin, head of the FWA, gives you a choice. Work for the FWA on a covert mission or sweat out whatever time you have left in your cell. Some choice. The Mission. Devlin and the FWA have your mission planned. After being released from your confinement cell at the Pentagon, you are taken to a waiting hovercraft. From there, you will be transported to the North Atlantic, where you will rendezvous with The Rig. The Rig is a mercenary operations base run by a man known only as Santos. 
The FWA has contacted has contracted with Santos to provide a jumping off point for your trip to the Siberia complex. Once on the rig, your orders are straightforward. Meet with Santos and take possession of a waiting TF-22 aircraft. The TF-22 has its autopilot set for the optimum route to the Siberia complex, as well as an onboard tactical computer for combat. Once the TF-22 delivers you to the Siberia complex, your orders are to infiltrate the base and find out just what the hell is going on. Yoink! So that's it. So uh, we got a little bit, little bit there. Should be, should be kind of interesting. The story's still pretty dumb in this game, but I, I want to go through it. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into Siberia, I guess. Uh, if you actually want to play along or decide you want to do this kooky thing yourself, uh, if you want to pick this game up from GOG, uh, click the link in the description below this video if you would. A tiny little piece of that goes to help support the channel, which I would appreciate very much. And, uh, yeah, I guess we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So let's, uh, dive into Siberia. See you on the other side, guys. All right, here we are, guys. So, yeah. So while we sit through this incredibly pretentious and gaudy interplay logo, I just thought I'd let you guys know as well. So there is dialogue in this game. Uh, so when that's happening, unlike my other video, I'm going to try to not talk over it. Uh, and I might try to raise the gameplay volume up a little bit for those bits so that you guys can hear it. Because this game does not have subtitles. So that's going to make things a little interesting potentially. Um, but we're going to see what happens here. Um, I'm also probably, if you saw my other video, I'm... I probably will kiss the girl again in this one, just because it's so dumb and it gives you more of an idea of what the combat's like. Uh, I've done those sequences so many times that it probably won't be that big a deal, so we shall see what happens here. Apologies as well if you end up seeing any weird um, pop-up windows or anything that come up over this. I have to record this game... Uh, as a capture of my screen as opposed to a uh, capturing the game itself because of the way it works. Uh, so if a window pops up or whatever, it might go over the, the this game. Hopefully that won't be the case. Please enter so I deleted my save, so we're going to start over again here so you guys can see. P -X -A. Select arcade level. So arcade level. This is the flight sequence bit. So we're going to set this to easy. easy. Select puzzle level. So... Sorry, Easy Arcade and Easy Puzzle are too easy. I love how the game just arbitrarily decides to make that decision for you. It's like, screw you! So, yeah, we're going to do level two puzzles. Welcome to Siberia. God, thanks. All right, here we go. So you got the little backstory here. So now we're in the hovercraft. Our NASCAR-sounding hovercraft barreling our way towards the Santos rig. All right. Hey, Zach, how's the ride? Sporty. And how about telling me what's up? Always to the point, my man. All right, here's the cinch. You'll rendezvous with the rig in about 10 minutes. Your contact is Santos. There's a TF-22 prepped and ready. I've never flown a TF-22. Ah, not to worry, you won't be flying this one. The autonav is set to take you by optimum route to the Siberia complex. Trust is a wonderful thing. I got you out of solitary, didn't I? Can't have you jetting around the globe instead of getting the job done, my man. Just what is the job, Devlin? Well, like I said, always to the point. All right, stand by. I'm going to shoot you some currents on the Siberia project. Still love that hair. I had top security clearance, but one of the science officers has started to tell me some things. They're making incredible advances in nanotechnology. I'm not sure if I believe to get the camera into one of the labs today, and then something very secret. All I could make out was a message about the project, learning to talk. The director went down to see for himself in his pajamas. He spent the next two days on the vid phone to Switzerland. It's getting really hot. I know the assistant suspects me, but I'm not worried really much in today. Security very tight. One of the technicians was injured yesterday. Nobody will say hi copies of some internal email messages. Might be useful. I get into this fellow. One died. They were constructing an isolation chamber on level two. Your message about the mission. I'll be gone by 0400 hours the day before. Don't let the team show up early. Damn. Hey, I knew that would grab your attention. So that's it. Infiltrate the complex and find the Siberia weapon. What do I do with it once I find it? Well, I don't know. Keep it company. There's a cleanup team 24 hours behind you. All right, kid. Gotta run. Catch you later. 
Thanks, super hair. See, that's the part I don't get, where it's like, go find this weapon, and then I don't know what you're supposed to do with it. And, like, I guess wait for the cleanup team? Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, you're sending me on a whip mission to find this thing, and then do nothing with it? It... I don't get it. I presume this gets to, you know, revealed later. I don't know, we'll see. Alright. So if you saw my original video, you know this bit. We're gonna go through this quickly. This is Santos. Report to my office immediately. Take the door on the right and don't wander around. Whatever. Dick Piston. The other reason, too, I'm going to kiss the girl in this is because that winds up with Santos getting killed and, you know, Turn fuck around that guy. nice and slow and disarm the weapon. Oh, that animation. <laughs> is this how you greet all your new arrivals? Only if they have a weapon. Gia, quit screwing around and bring him to my office. Come on. I'll take you to see Santos. We're under attack. Come on, follow me. I just love how jarring that is. It's like, we're under attack, go. You take the gun on the right. <laughs> I didn't trust you two minutes ago, two seconds ago, but now you're going to defend the, our station. So I'm going to do this sequence with the keyboard. This is actually easier than the mouse. Watch it. So we're going to... Is my... Okay, good. I actually forgot to check to see if my controller was still plugged in, which would throw this all to hell, but it's not. Ah, nice serene view of the ocean, you know? I could just stay here for a while and just chill, relax. Wow. Does this substantially reduce the number of enemies when you're playing on easy? As I understood it, all the uh, lower arcade difficulty does is increase the hitboxes. But at least for this sequence, it looks like there's just not a lot of guys to shoot at. Well, sorry about that, guys. I didn't realize... I didn't realize this bit uh, got so much more boring on easy. Wow. This is uh, riveting. Watch it. Taking out a whole air force. Oh no, the mines. The mines. Okay, well now it's picking up pace a little bit. A lot more magnetic mines this time around. Nice kill. The enemies this throws at you in this sequence are completely randomized, so... Fighters coming in. Uh, sometimes you'll get a lot of magnetic mines, sometimes not very many. Look at all them Apaches. We we're going to put a real big dent in the uh, the cartel's army, you would think, after this, considering he sends, like, you know, the equivalent of... Nice kill. Like a whole... Like a half dozen platoons after you. Also, what's deploying those mines? Like, are they just dropping them from a distant uh, aircraft or something? I don't know. Or is there, like, some way distant, like, carrier that we don't see? I don't know. <sighs> Peaceful. Like, there's such a big gap here. You think I could just get on my, my TF-22 and get on route to Siberia and be like, You guys deal with this. I'm out. Peace. Those guys didn't even shoot at me! <laughs> they just like buzzed the tower. <laughs> oh, we're gonna freak you out! Oh, no, we're not even shooting. Hi. This was considered state of the art in the 90s, my friends. It was a dark time, mayhaps. It's funny that, like, in the middle of, like, the Super Nintendo era and, the, you know, we had the Saturn and we had all the, these other consoles that had pretty incredible gameplay experiences that, you know, gameplay design, maybe not technical presentation, but gameplay design uh, regressed so far on the PC for a while in this interactive movie era, and yet most of these things did really well. Like, this game got a sequel. 
a lot of these interactive movies like this and The Seventh Guest and uh, stuff like that all, all sold pretty well. Mostly just because people were buying these expensive, you know, CD-ROM kits and wanted something cool to show them off with, so... These are more tech demos than anything. That was amazing. Kiss me. This is still, like, the dumbest writing I've ever seen. Like, why would someone do that? That is so not what would happen in the real world. And now we made Santos Jedi. Hmm. Get him. Right, boss. You jelly bro? <laughs> I kissed your horrible polygonal girlfriend? No, he's still out. Search the hovercraft and see what you can find. And send Gia down here. Ah, you're awake. No use struggling, you're not going anywhere. Now maybe we can talk about why we were attacked. Zappy Zappy! What are you doing? You're killing him! Yeah, and I wanted you to see it. You're sick. Hey, what are you doing? No! Stop it! Hey. Ah. <laughs> I love how he doesn't have to take his glass. He never takes his glasses off, even when he's he's uh, incarcerated. He's got to be, you know, got to maintain his cool. I'm a hacker, man. I'm elite. My glasses say so. Taking my gun back. Well, bye, Gia. It was fun while it lasted, but you know, all good things, right? <laughs> oh God, that's horrible. So gross. So this was a good chunk of the sequence I did in my uh, original retro flashback, though. The puzzle when we get to the ship is going to be interesting because I'm on medium now. There's quite a few more switches to hit. All right. See if I can get this timing right on the first first try this time. I purposely boned it up in the uh, retro flashback, so let's see what I can do here. See if I can time this right the first time. Santos and G are dead. He's escaped. Got it. I'ma shoot you in the face. Ha! Over the rail you go. I'm an elite fighting hacker. Hack you back to the Stone Age, son. All right. Here's the next one. Get back behind your crate. Bro. For reals, come on. Really? Ah! Man, I'm good at this. Yeah, it won't last. All right. So we know what's next here from the old video. There's a bomb. Now, there's only two switches you had to click in the other one. There's a few more this time, right? Yeah. So let's see what we got here. All right. Cut the red wire. They're all red wires. Okay, so... Um, so I know you always start with that, because that's the vibration sensor, which of course you'd put on a switch, because why the hell not? Uh, you see, you're supposed to be able to determine this based on this grid thing here, which... Does this make any sense to anybody? Because it doesn't to me. Okay. Get used to that noise. All right. <sighs> okay. So it's always that one. And then I want to say in the easy, it was that. 
Oh, okay. So that still that still sticks. Now what the hell do I do? <laughs> uh, well, the only other switch is that that is not up is this one. So maybe it's. <laughs> wow, it was that simple. Okay, just make everything go in the up position. Sure, why not? Also, I love how he just does that and walks away from the bomb like, yeah, man, it's nothing. I deal with bombs all day. I go to that thing and I'm just like, nah, son, you ain't get me now. He just doesn't care. Like, he's like, huh, there was a bomb on the plane. Maybe I should be concerned about that. Nah, we got it. We out. Screw all you guys. Santos is a dick, so I don't care if he gets killed. All right. Now, hopefully the mouse control is going to work this time. Because otherwise, this is going to be a long series of flight sequences. Here we go. Hair. Still alive. Just how hot is this thing? The cartel wants it pretty bad. They know we have the Siberia files, but I thought that if I sent you in alone, we could avoid all of this crap. Yeah? Well, it looks like they're laying out the welcome map. Indeed. TaxCan shows a lot of cartel activity on your route to the complex. Your onboard fire control system should be able to handle it. Machine faith, Devlin? Trust is a wonderful thing, remember? <laughs> right. I'm gonna stroke my phallic-like braids. 